this along with a with a bunch of other watches just uh, basic quartz things needing batteries and the like so <coughs> Steve if you are if you are watching this right now have no fear we will we will try our utmost to get your Betty Boop watch back up and running for you there you go a quick look at this now that it's out of the case and you can actually see the dial is really really nice it's, uh, it's got this beautiful sort of striated effect I'm gonna go ahead and start stripping this and we begin by removing the dial and uh, the usual kind of method and the dial feet are held by screws on the side so I'm go ahead and start stripping the watch movement so disassembly of the movement begins by removal of the day wheel, which simply lifts away. And you'll note that the day wheel doesn't actually align correctly at this stage. That will be rectified later by turning the star on the back, which is friction fit. I then begin to remove components from underneath the day wheel which operate the quick day date change mechanism. I don't have the specific names of these parts to hand, but they all interact to operate the quick day date change. Here I remove the wheel that holds the date ring in place, or rather the, the ring that holds the date ring in place. Uh, what wasn't shown there, uh, opposite the first screw that I removed of the quick day date mechanism is another screw through the plate which needs to be removed. The spring for the day wheel just lifts away and then the date wheel jumper, uh, also not shown there was the date wheel jumper spring, which I do show a little later in the disassembly. And then the quick day date changeover wheel just lifts away also as shown here. The calendar ring is then free to be removed. And another portion of the quick day date change mechanism just lifts away followed by the spring which actuates onto that which holds down one side of the plate covering the cannon pinion And here I just show the placement of this particular spring after removing the screw as it jumped out of place whilst unscrewing. So that actually has a locating hole where my tweezers are just now. And the finger goes down there. The hour wheel lifts off the cannon pinion and then the second screw for the cover plate which covers the cannon pinion and minute wheel is removed this plate might need a little bit of wiggling to remove as the minute wheel is actually held under spring tension underneath it. And that will be visible once the minute wheel is lifted away and the cannon pinion just slides off because the friction is actually provided by the second wheel of the movement with a sliding pinion. 
and there you can see the small spring that bears against the minute wheel the outer ring just pops away from the movement and then we move on to the top side of the watch removing the automatic bridge which is a cassette mechanism and is held in place by two screws the oscillating weight is removed by unscrewing and sliding the clamp which you can see to the right there next to the balance wheel and this will be shown a bit more clearly on reassembly and I will demonstrate when I refit the oscillating weight in the case with these two retaining screws removed the whole assembly just lifts away as a complete cas uh, cassette assembly and I will show the dismantling of that towards the end of the video care must be taken when disassembling this as it contains two springs two jumper springs at this point the assembly is fairly straightforward with removal of the balance that's put aside for refitting later before it goes into the cleaning machine next to be removed is the pallet cock and this can be quite firm as in this case here and care must be taken when levering this away because the pallet pivots are very tiny and very fragile and here we see the pallet fork I do try and get that a little bit clearer in the shot in just a moment next for removal is the ratchet wheel and although not shown here you can see on reassembly and you will see in the next video that the ratchet wheel actually has the rotary logo on it which um, demonstrates that this has been taken apart in the past and reassembled with the ratchet wheel upside down not that it particularly matters because it's a, a flat stamped wheel and the operation is the same but visually obviously it makes a difference after removal of the ratchet wheel the click spring is removed just for reasons of safekeeping to make sure that that doesn't disappear and that's a very fine shepherd's crook type spring as you can see and then the next step is the crown wheel which has a collar which I show just here it's essential that that color isn't lost otherwise it will not fit and rotate correctly and that's retained of course by a left-handed screw thread here I'm just testing the end shake of the train wheels using some very fine pointed number five tweezers and then we continue with removal of the train bridge the train bridge holds all of the train wheels including the escape wheel in place quite often the escape wheel will have a separate bridge in many movements and it does make it a little bit trickier when refitting but not impossible this is retained by three screws and although it's quite difficult to see here there are two 
slightly domed headed screws and one flat headed screw which holds this plate in place and the two slightly domed headed screws should go on the outer ring with the decoration and the flat headed screw on the other edge it doesn't matter to the operation of the movement and these were in the incorrect location and it will work with them in the wrong places as they're all the same length screw but visually for appearances the two matching domed headed screws should go on the decorated part of the plate with that removed we disassemble the train of wheels and the automatic winding wheel that has been lifted away there a fourth wheel with its extended pivot is lifted out carefully and then the remainder of the wheels is removed with the escape wheel first because the second wheel is wedged quite firmly down next to the barrel and it's easier to remove with the other wheels out of the way and this particular wheel as I will show you in just a second has a sliding pinion on and this provides the friction for the cannon pinion for setting the time here I try to get that in the shot and give you a better idea of how that's constructed hopefully you can see there that there are two sets of pinions the upper one is a sliding pinion or a, a friction fitted pinion next up is the barrel bridge which is a very simple affair with uh, which is held by two screws and is jeweled at the top but not on the main plate underneath the click is left in place and this is something I usually do unless I absolutely have to remove it and then it will be removed, checked, cleaned and, and uh, oiled manually upon reassembly. And then the barrel finally just lifts clear of the plate and that's the upper side of the watch disassembled. We move back to the dial side and remove the setting lever spring. The setting lever spring on these movements is quite an unusual one and it incorporates a, a small set of gears which are fitted and held in place by a clip. And you see there the screw for the top of the plate, half of the screw head has unfortunately broken off there because it was over tightened in the past and although I tried to locate a spare for reassembling this I wasn't able to at present and I really need to sort out my box of screws into some kind of order so that I can find things like that more easily in the future um, but that plate lifts away once these two screws are removed and here I try to show you the construction of the setting lever plate to give you a bit of an idea of the unusual lever system and this moves in conjunction with the setting lever and the yoke to engage and disengage the hand setting and quick date change mechanisms in the two different positions towards the middle remove the yoke spring followed by the yoke apologies that I go off uh, off camera a little here um, but it's uh, it's tricky focusing on something and trying to remember to keep the movement in shot as I'm used to moving the movement to and fro during uh, working on it and there's the setting lever which is quite a standard affair and finally the winding stem along with the clutch and winding pinion are removed the main plate is then turned back over to the top side and the balance is refitted in preparation for that going through the cleaning machine there are various ways to go about uh, cleaning 
watches and this is a method that I personally prefer is to leave the shock jewels in place and refit the balance and it is quite safe to run through the cleaning machine in this manner. Some people remove the balance jewels and run it through the, uh, the machine. I'm not a big fan of that personally and some people clean it separately, completely individually. Uh, none of them are wrong ways and as long as the movement is cleaned and not damaged either one will work. Here we see the automatic winding assembly which as mentioned is like a cassette mechanism. It's held together by a single screw. Once that screw is removed the upper plate lifts away which allows you access to the two levers and the large gear wheel and there where my tweezers are just now and at the lower right hand side are two um, small shepherd's crook type springs where I'm pointing there and there and for cleaning purposes I go ahead and remove the gear wheel and the two levers and then reassemble the plate halves together to sandwich the springs in between them and run that through the cleaning machine as a complete unit rather than risk um, losing the springs because small springs such as these are not particularly good in cleaning machine baskets as they can drop through the mesh and in doing that they can either be damaged or they can cause damage to other components while everything's swishing about in there. Here as mentioned the plate halves are reassembled and the securing screw is fitted back through and there you can get a better visual on the securing clamp for the oscillating weight. So that wraps up the disassembly and thank you for watching and we'll see you in part two which is the reassembly.